So go with the duration acute or chronic. More than chronic, more than 40 hours, don't don't wait. In long term, you can only manage with diet. So acute pulmonary edema again, our dialysis patients or chronic kidney patients come commonly with dialysis to the ER. Only any you know somebody with urea of CD patients, urea of 80 or 100, okay, and creatinine of 3, 3.5 coming with pulmonary edema. I see a lot of people giving LASIX 20 milligram or 40 milligram. So don't do that. When you give a LASIX, the thumb rule again, I'll tell you, if somebody is having a urea of around 100 or urea of around 80, at least make sure you give 80 milligram of LASIX. This is a thumb rule what we tell. So if somebody is having 100 urea, 120, at least think about giving 100 milligram. So 20 or 40 will not help you in any way. It's not even going to touch you. So approximately whatever is the solutes urea you will have, you know, you need one LASIX to bind to one urea, you take like that. So one, one LASIX, will bind to one urea, at least like that thumb rule, you know, you think like that and then you give LASIX. So whenever it will come with severe pulmonary edema, at least give, if somebody's creatinine is 3.5 or 4, if urea of 100, just give 80 to 100 milligram. Once he stabilizes, then you put him on infusion at 10 milligram per hour or something like that. If they don't respond to LASIX, then we only we dilate them. And also in here, don't hesitate to intubate them. Severely respiratory distress, don't wait, you know, the, the moment you wait, longer time is also, what we do is just sedate or paralyze and intubate them. Once you do that, you know, they do really well because we have, we lose a lot of patients waiting for them, you know, for the LASIX to act or NIV and then, you know, we normally severely breathless, we don't wait, we sedate them, put them on ventilator, then we continue, it's much safer to do it. So, I'll just given some brief thing, the, what all I could do with all the nephrological emergency. So, if you have any questions, I'll take. It all depends, see, uh, see, normally what happens is, you know, I've told you how much of the loss. In case the potassium is around 3 is at least we'll have 150 to 200 milli equivalents of potassium loss. So I told you, you know, you give 20, 15, you only around 20 ml three times a day you give, you're only giving it for, you're giving 60 milli equivalents per day. So at least, you know, 60, 60, 60, okay, at least two to three days, you have to give that bottle or whatever you give for three things. So at least 20 ml three times a day, you give it for two days or three days, but again, you'll repeat after two days. It's not exactly, you know, you, do, you can't exactly, that is a loss. It is overall, it can underestimate or overestimate. But, you know, don't, if you're giving all those things, make sure you repeat the test again after two days. That's very important. Sir, in selected few groups, you said uh, diuretics and hyponatremia. Will you please elaborate that group? Sir, so, so that's why hyponatremia, always people think only the salt is low, the sodium is low. No, always it's problem with the water. Hyponatremia is a problem related to water. It is not related to the salt. So, whatever, when, what happens to the water? When somebody is clinical, you will because always the water is extra. So when you clear the water, automatically the sodium improves. So that's the role of diuretic. That's the role we will give diuretic because it helps along with 3% saline, you give diuretic also, it helps you to automatically remove the extra water from the body. That's why in SADH or all these uh, ulemic hyponatremia, we restrict the water also. So what happens is you just restrict less than 1 litre, automatically in chronic hyponatremia who has SADH, the only treatment is salt and water restriction. Means salt, normally we give more salt, 8 to 10 grams of salt. But water will restrict around 1 litre. So again, you will make. Hypolemic, again, again the salt. Say hypervolemic, salt free, fluid restriction. Hypervolemic, salt free, fluid restriction. You will make more salt, less water. And depletional, you just, that doesn't matter. I can talk, but Shahid is there, is going to talk. And Shahid talks, I leave it to him, he's the best person. So I leave the urology, obstruction, stone, everything to Shahid. Urologist. It's not like that I am I am I am washing my hands, but because my expert colleague is there to talk on that emergency, I leave that to him. No, I'm sorry, okay, time to pay. So I'm I i did not I I didn't listen to your question, sir. If you don't mind. Regarding uh, kidney uretic stones, any obstruction can cause acute kidney injury. Up to what size of the calculi we can so size doesn't this. matter. See, unilateral obstruction will not cause AKI. We have two kidneys, one kidney obstruction will not lead to AKI unless that is causing infection or something. For somebody to have AK high, we should have bilateral obstruction, which is very, very rare, or a single kidney with obstruction. Somebody has a single kidney and stone causing obstruction can cause AK high. But just because somebody has a whatever stone, less than 5 mm will not cause hydronephrosis. 5 to 10 mm or more than that in the PUJ junction, hydronephrosis, it will not lead to AK high. But uh, you know, the problem is because of obstruction, whether he has urinary infection because of that or pyonephrosis, whatever is a, that sequelae cause AK high. But unilateral obstruction will not cause AK at all. Whatever is the size of the stone. I just got a comment. It was a very comprehensive uh, coverage of uh, multiple conditions. I just want to say for the benefit of uh, any junior doctors and practitioners, correction of uh, hyponatremia, they need to be cautious because rapid correction can lead to severe demyelination. 
Correct. That's the reason I told we probably don't correct more than eight to ten milligrams per day. But in case it's very very acute or severe, patient is in seizure, then up to ten to twelve also. But don't correct more than that. It can cause central demyelination, pontal demyelination. That's the reason. My question is different. Now, patients who are on hemodialysis, the skin color changes. What is the exact reason? <laughs> so this is out of my thing, but still, uh, so uremia itself, you know, uremic toxins, it can cause uremic frost. Uremia, the toxins itself, lot of things, skin color can change. Now, is it correct uh, the urochrome will be will not be removed from uh, during See, if you ask me, there are so many theories. So many, there are so many things. I have to go small molecules, middle molecules, larger molecules. So many molecules which are there. Uh -huh. Dialysis can only remove a certain molecules. It can ca can't remove all the molecules. So these things are the one. There are so many other toxins which are there, which can causes uremia and all mm -hmm. these color changes. So it's and one more question for Dr. Harshita, which I want to ask. Probably allergy. if you are, I can answer that question. I'll try. Allergy to question. regarding allergy. Okay. We have treated in a hospital setup for an allergy with all the drugs. So in between what happened, the patient survived, everything is okay. But he was uh, hitting his heart with a fist during that treatment. What may be the reason? I don't know, sir. I don't know why he was hitting his heart, really, I don't know. Hitting throat. Probably. Throat, uh, the. I don't know, sir. I don't know why he was hitting his heart, really, I don't know. Hitting throat. Probably. Throat, uh, the. I don't know, probably. Uh, no, he is treated for allergy, recovered. With the fist, both the eye, over the heart. I don't. I just want to know. Probably answer. even I don't even Arshita would have answered. As long as he is not eating us, I'm happy. <laughs> Probably even I don't even Arshita would have answered. As long as he is not eating us, I'm happy. <laughs> Anything else, or uh, shall I hand over to my next speaker? Because okay, thanks a lot. Dr. Shikant Rao, to hand over a moment to Dr. Satish.